Hello and welcome to the OM Genomics Show. I'm your host, Maria Nadestad, and today I'm answering a question about bioinformatics career prospects versus regular biology, wet lab biology career prospects. This is a question that comes to us from Adam, and I'm going to read his question now. So he asks, hi Maria, your channel is great and really informative. What do you think of careers in bioinformatics at the moment? Would you say there are more or less prospective than lab-based roles? Why would I want to learn bioinformatics from a careers perspective? It would be great to hear your opinions. Thanks, Adam. I think this is a really great question and one that I think deserves even more of an answer than I posted to you in text form originally. Bioinformatics does have very interesting career prospects compared to a wet lab biology kind of research role. For one thing, we need to talk about things like salaries, but also the demand for the job that you would be doing. So salaries also go along with how easy it is for you to find the job in the first place, because it's all about the market. It's all about supply and demand. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Now, first of all, I've talked to a few professors about this, and I've heard from a number of them that they are looking for postdocs who can do bioinformatics. And this is really something that I've heard a lot because I was finishing my PhD and they would come to me and they would ask me and they would ask if I know people, please, who do bioinformatics and who are really good at this kind of work. And it's really hard for them to find good bioinformatics postdocs. So one of them explained that he actually pays his bioinformatics postdocs $15,000 a year more than his wet lab postdocs. And if you know postdoc salaries, this actually is a huge difference. And he has to do this, he says, because that's the market. This is a really important point. It is relatively easy to find uh, people who want to do a postdoc in biology. Finding good people is always hard in every field, for sure, but it's even harder in bioinformatics. And this is because of supply and demand. And so the reason that bioinformaticians get paid more and will have an easier time finding a job, at least currently in 2017, is two points, low supply and high demand for bioinformaticians. So first of all, low supply compared to other areas of biology. And this happens because we need additional skills to do bioinformatics. We need to not only know the biology and the domain knowledge really well, but also understand computer science and or math and statistics. I rely mostly on computer science, so that's my thing. And it's okay to not know all of these areas, but you do have to become at least somewhat of an expert, at least among other bioinformaticians and other biologists in one of these fields like computer science. And that is an additional skill that is hard to get. It takes additional time. It also takes someone who actually wants to learn these things. Not all biologists are interested in becoming bioinformaticians, but if you do have that interest, this video kind of explains how that could actually be a really great career move for you. So in addition to having to get additional skills, and that makes it harder to get into bioinformatics than to do biology, we also see people that are leaving bioinformatics after even getting a PhD in it to go back to the tech industry or something like that. Because uh, for instance, I do know people from my own circle. I know one guy who went and worked at Facebook doing data science right after his PhD in bioinformatics. And another one who joined an early stage startup right out of his PhD in bioinformatics. So the, the lesson here is that with great bioinformatics skills, you are also getting skills in machine learning, data science, general computer programming, that and software development, and I have data visualization skills. And there's all these things that you can take and bring into the tech industry as well. And so sometimes those jobs will actually be more exciting to some people. You may have different opportunities than you would get staying in biology, and you may in fact get paid more. And that's very much you know, depending on the situation and the kinds of jobs you'd be doing, either in the tech industry or the biotech industry. Um, so there are those differences. So this is what causes a low supply of bioinformaticians compared to regular biologists. You have to learn more skills, and once you have those skills, it's easier to leave the field. 
Now we also experience a higher demand for bioinformaticians. And this one is in fact pretty easy to explain just given what's happening in the field right now. What we're seeing is that you have a lot of new high throughput technologies, especially next generation sequencing, that have just become so efficient and optimized that they're producing more data than we have than we can easily analyze. And this is a really great thing. It's not a problem. It is something that, you know, along with next generation sequencing and GS, we're also seeing things like robotics that are automating some of the repetitive pipetting tasks in labs and so on. And these are creating a new world where biologists will spend, hopefully, I think, more of their time thinking through the experiments than actually doing the pipetting themselves. And I think that's really great. But it does also mean that they end up with a lot more data at the end of the day that they may need to have these kinds of math and computer science skills in order to analyze really well. And if they're not going to analyze that themselves, we need people to build tools to help them analyze that data. And this is not an easy task. It's not something that we can just do once because every area of biology has different needs. There's all these different custom data analyses that you would need to do. So we essentially need bioinformaticians to build specific tools for every minor area of biology if the biologists in that area themselves don't become the bioinformaticians and start building those tools. Now, there is an important note from these professors that I've talked to. What they're looking for is not just a bioinformatician in general. In fact, they can find bioinformaticians, but what it comes down to after I have um, interrogated them a little bit and ask a few more questions is that it really comes down to wanting people who can build software. So when you're building software, you want to build something that's big enough and important enough, something that can be used by other people and something that's enough of an impact in itself that you can give it a name and write a methods paper about it that gets published. So that's really kind of the baseline. That's what you want. You want to be able to make a tool like that. If you can build those tools, then a lot more companies and in industry might be interested in hiring you because they can see that you have a project, that you have produced something beyond analyzing data. And that's what a lot of the professors that I've talked to have really told me that that's what they're looking for. If you really dig down being able to produce an actual piece of software for other people to use is the primary skill that they're looking for. And I've actually heard this from biotech industry as well when they're saying they're looking for good people who can do that. So hopefully from this video, you've become a bit more excited about the career prospects of doing bioinformatics. I do have limited hearsay experience, but I've heard a lot of people that have independently told me that they have a hard time finding bioinformaticians to do a postdoc, and especially the ones who can build software tools. So that's what I hope that you'll take away from this video. Um, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below here on YouTube. And I'm excited to see if you have any other questions that I can then turn into additional videos. So leave a comment below if you want to, and go check out everything I have at omgenomics.com. And thanks for watching.